Welcome back to the Celiac Advice Corner. I was going to stick this up, but then I thought it's probably out of focus. And then I also thought, we're not just giving advice to celiacs. We're giving advice to all gluten-free people. I'm so sorry for not being... What's the word? Inclusive. That's terrible, so chuck that away. Welcome back to the Gluten-Free Advice Corner. We'll workshop that. Hello everyone, how are you? Great! Today we're doing a, another celiac advice corner. The first one that I did was like a year ago and I thought, hey, some people probably still need advice. <laughs> Let's do another one. I will give a disclaimer right now. This is not advice for anything medical. I don't do that. I'm doing life advice. Okay? So yes, I asked you guys on Instagram, what advice would you like me to give you? Um, because for some reason I'm qualified to give life advice. But anyway, these were the top responses, so I put them in this little jar with little bits of paper, and let's just jump right into it. The drink of choice today, water. Bit boring, but I did, I forgot to put on the kettle, so. Hope you're having a cup of tea yourself, though. Another disclaimer, this might not be good advice. Okay, hot drinks machine and cross-contamination. Hot chocolate often has barley and uses the same hole. Well, that's not a question. <laughs> I think the advice is just around hot drinks machines and cross-contamination. Well, actually, I feel like I am qualified to answer this one because I am a coffee maker, barista at my job at the moment. So I do have a fair idea of cross-contamination and I have some good news. Firstly, yes, some hot chocolate mixes do contain barley. That is always, always, always something that I ask about if I want a hot chocolate. I honestly think I get about a 50-50 response of if it has barley in it or if it doesn't. So just make sure you're asking about that. Secondly, for the hot drinks machine, wait, hold on. Uses the same hole. What type of hot drinks machine? See, I was thinking a coffee machine, but now I'm thinking it's one of those hot drinks machines. You know, the ones that you just press coffee, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> I'll circle back to it because I do want to talk about coffee machines and give you a little bit of peace of mind. So as a barista um, and a celiac, I would always recommend telling the person making you coffee that you've got an allergy or dietary requirement. But luckily, it's actually pretty easy to mitigate cross-contamination when you're making hot drinks. Even if they do use like oat milk or something. Giving the little tube thing like a good wipe down. And also maybe getting them to use a clean jug or using like a different steamer or whatever is absolutely enough to mitigate those cross-contamination risks so you'd be absolutely fine. Also making sure that the person who's making your coffee takes you seriously is probably a good good piece of advice because if they're sort of like oh what's that like for example one time that I went to a place I asked if they if their milks were all gluten free because you know sometimes there's oat milk and um, they were like uh yes but we use dairy we use dairy I'm like okay but are they gluten free and they're like well no because cow's milk is it's got dairy in it they're like explaining it out to me and I was like okay I'm gonna just go somewhere else then but in terms of the same whole ones if you can find out what the go with the hot chocolate is, then great. But if not, maybe don't use them. Yeah, I, I, I literally know nothing about them. I don't know if they self-clean or anything. Sorry, that terrible advice. But hey, hopefully we learned something about coffee machines. Let's have a look. I find baking depends on what flour you use. I've had lots of fails. What are your thoughts? Well, I have a lot of thoughts on baking. Uh, oh no. I don't think I have any thoughts at all. Flowers play a huge role in gluten-free baking. Gluten-free gluten -free flour, gluten -free flour blends always contain a different mix of flowers, but they generally produce a really good standard flour that you should be able to make most things out of. Where it gets a little bit more trickier is things like bread, things like pastry, uh, you know, things that require a very certain structure and texture. So those blends are generally made out of three or four different types of flours that all work together to make a very classic flour that should try be as gluten-y as possible. But if you're talking about separate flours, like tapioca flour, potato starch, corn flour, stuff like that, you will get vastly different results if you're just using one of those flours. It's best to use a mixture unless it's for something very specialised like those Brazilian cheese balls, 
um, that you use tapioca or uh, that you use tapioca flour for. Yeah, and that totally comes down to the absorption rates of all of the flour, um, the fineness of it, how heavy it is. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Did I help? Probably not. If you are looking for a good flour blend and you're in the UK, I always recommend the Dove's Free From Flour one. If you're in New Zealand, um, I like the Edamons standard gluten-free flour. If you're anywhere else, I have no idea. You can get gluten from a kiss. Discovered that this weekend and am suffering. Yes, I have heard people say this, although I do wonder how recently you have to have eaten and how much your tongue has to be inside the other person's mouth picking up all the food particles for that to occur, but yes, it has been reported that this happens to some people. It has never happened to me, thankfully. Ugh. Actually, the idea of putting your tongue inside someone's mouth and then touching like a food particle makes me want to vomit. Make sure the person you're kissing has a clean mouth for more than just that reason. How to get people to understand that I'm not gluten-free by choice. I'm assuming just explaining to them that you're not gluten-free by choice has, has failed. You could go the route that I've done and just make your whole life about it and make a YouTube channel about it and Instagram, TikTok, Facebook about it. But that does require a lot of time. So aside from that, I guess it depends how close you are to them, what your relationship with is, with them is. But if they're not taking you seriously, like, might be a couple of reasons. One, they're a dick. Or two, they've just never had any experience with any type of gut-related issue or food dietary requirement in their life. And they are very, very lucky people. So they just cannot understand that that is such a necessity or three it's an older person they just keep forgetting in which case you just gotta gotta bring your own food it is annoying and difficult when people push back on you needing to eat gluten-free but you can always show them resources if they're open to learning that's the other thing if they're open to learning i've made several short one minute videos about like a, dr a dramatizing what happens when you eat gluten if you want to use any of them you can just find them on my tiktok but aside from that I would just start taking them into the bathroom with you once you've been glutened and see how they feel after that. I've finished work late and need to pick up a meal. What can I do? London. Like, late and everything's closed? There's always something open in London, unless it's a Sunday for some reason. Most McDonald's have separate fries for their fries a lot of 24 hour shops like little convenience stores there's always something you can find in there it depends what you need are you looking for a whole meal or are you looking for a snack some of the major train stations are pretty good for like keeping all their places open late in that case i'd go for a leon leon's one of my favorite takeaways mostly gluten free pretty good at understanding cross contamination but otherwise just make something at home before you go to work microwave it when you get back how to get over the disappointment of gluten free versions never being as good I do not believe that that is always the case. Yes, there it is. Some of the cases of the breads and the croissants and the pastries. Yes, I believe that. But there is a lot of things that I think are equally good, if not better, if I've made it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you're talking about just classic day-to-day -day items like a supermarket sandwich, yeah, that's, that's not going to be as good. But I think something that really helped me was getting more into food and getting more into baking and cooking. Um, so I can make those things just as delicious as I remember them. But also, I don't know if you recently diagnosed whoever sent this in, uh, you do start to forget what things taste like. I probably couldn't tell you what a pastry texture, gluten pastry texture is rapidly disappearing from my brain. I don't, I don't know if I can entirely remember what it tasted like, which is a bit of a worry, and that's why I'm really working on some pastry recipes at the moment while I can still remember. Rest assured, Gluten-free food's also only going to get better. So if there's something in particular that you don't think lives up to the standard of gluten food, give it five years. Probably will. What's a good script of what to say to a waiter in a restaurant? Morgan, interior, night. Morgan picks up the phone, calls a restaurant. Hello, restaurant. Do you cater for gluten-free people? You do? Can I double check that you're able to cater for people with celiac disease or an allergy? You can? Fantastic. Please book me a table for two at 10 p.m. That's really late. 8, 9, 7.30 p.m. Later that day, 7.30 p.m. Interior restaurant. Morgan, hi, I've made, <laughs> I've made a reservation. Waiter, young, dashing, shows me to the table. They ask, 
Can I get you any drinks? Morgan. Actually, can I please see the gluten-free menu? This is getting a bit ridiculous. Um, here's some main things to ask. <laughs> Before you go, always research. One, can you cater for gluten-free people if I have a gluten allergy or celiac disease? You can, great, check, boom. If you're being more spontaneous, that might be a question that you speak to at the door with a waiter. I would have a look at their gluten-free menu if they have one. Just ask some simple questions like if you see something fried, is that fried in a separate fryer for gluten-free people? If the answer is no, I probably wouldn't trust the restaurant. <laughs> um, if it's yes, all good. You can ask if they've got a separate area to make gluten-free food. If they have like an allergy proce procedure where they wipe down stuff. And then when you're ordering, I always say, can you make sure you put that that's gluten-free and that it's an allergy? And I know it can feel like a little bit embarrassing and like you don't want to be an inconvenience, but yeah, look, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, I promise. How to survive summer in France? Uh, Voulez-vous que c'est avec moi ce soir? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, uh, I'm, a, I'm guessing this is in relation to gluten-free food. I would probably follow some people that are in France and are gluten-free as well. There's so many amazing resources on the internet and lots of super helpful handy guides. Um, I would probably suggest looking for a guide that is a little bit more updated, especially since the pandemic there has just been like so many places closing and opening. I don't know what that's like in France but I'm just saying for you know in London. I wouldn't personally know. I haven't been to France since I was 12 um, but I, someone will. Someone will know. How to get over feeling an inconvenience at a friend's house and restaurants. I don't think that there is any special, quick, magical answer for this. No quick fix. It's just getting used to it for a lot of people. Some people can come in straight and they're absolutely fine because they're just full of confidence. And, and you could do that too. Even if you don't feel confident, you can just fake it until you make it. it a good thing to remember for restaurants in particular, you're never going to see them again. Unless the food's really good, then you end up going all the time. But... At least they'll know that you have allergies. <laughs> in terms of friends, I think that any good friend would never make you feel like an inconvenience. I know that we can feel like an inconvenience, but if you put yourself in their shoes, if one of your friends came to you and said, oh, I can't eat this. Is it all right if I sort something out or blah, 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 blah. You'd be like, absolutely, that's fine. Good friends, I don't think, will ever make you feel like an inconvenience. Restaurant, as, as also a waitress myself, everyone's an inconvenience anyway, so... <laughs> So it doesn't matter. Another tip for friend things, I just always let my friends know I'll sort out my own dinner. Don't ask me again. <laughs> I will sort out my own dinner. Don't even buy me a gluten-free pizza. I will sort it out myself. The reaction tends to be like, oh, can't I bake you? Can't I cook you something? Can't I do this? Can't I do this? Like, no. No. And it's not your fault, friend. It's just I'm going to do it myself because I need to... I need to know how everything's going on. Maybe that's a little bit being over precautious. There are a few people that I'd totally let cook for me, um, but that is the people that I have deemed to fully understand what gluten-free is. And some people don't, and that's totally okay. At the end of the day, it is our dietary requirements, so the responsibility is, is mostly on us to look after ourselves. Is that grim? Is that a bit dark? Oh, well. What supple- Nope. I never talk about supplements. Are cola and Pepsi gluten free? I feel like this one could have been Googled. <laughs> Coca Cola is definitely gluten free. Some own brand colas, like fake Cokes, are not because they contain barley malt extract. One of the ones I can think about off the top of my head would be Karma Cola. That's not gluten free. Um, and some of the ones I think in Sainsbury's, they've got their own brand cola that's also not gluten free. It's Pepsi. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a Pepsi, but I'm pretty sure it is. If it's not, Editing Morgan can tell me I'm wrong, so. Am I right? Yes, Morgan. You are correct. Great. Opinions on May contains. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, I don't eat them. But also if you do, like, that's your prerogative. I... Don't eat them just because some companies go out of their way to put that on the label because there's actually a real risk. I know some companies put it on their label because they don't want to be sued or told off or taken to the food court people. That totally exists. <laughs> but unless I am going to commit to contacting the manufacturer and asking why is this a may contain and calculating the risk for myself, then nah. I just tend to stay away from them. That being said, if I've eaten something and I find out it's may contain, I'm not, I'm not too stressed. But that's just my thoughts. This person only asks my thoughts. They're not telling me what you should do. Um, 
and that is my thoughts. <laughs> so our last little one. Travel advice, please. <laughs> Well, actually, I think I could do a whole video on that. So I'm going to lock that in my brain to remind myself to do, especially now that we can all travel mostly again. I'm actually going. I'm going away. Yeah, I'm going to Barcelona in Spain. I'll make sure I film it because apparently Barcelona is like one of the best places to be gluten free. Is like, so what have I done for this trip that I can talk to you about now? I have researched what food places I can eat at. There's so many specialty gluten-free bakeries, like maybe even more than London. Because I love travel itineraries, that's one of the things that I like to do. Sort of mapped out where we're staying, how far away there is to gluten-freeness around me, the main things that we're gonna go check out and what gluten-free places are around there. I look up what's gluten-free in the language of the place that I'm going. I look up what their like certification symbols are and there's just so much information from people that regularly travel there from spanish people that have very kindly put a lot of guides in english for us luckily barcelona is one of those places that is very that i'm very able to be catered for and not even need to worry so much about cross-contamination but there are places that aren't and that just requires a little bit more preparation, a little bit more talking to people who may have gone there that are gluten-free, using Instagram for that, that's ideal. Booking a place that you can stay, that you can cook your own food, I've done that as well. Finding a big supermarket and going crazy on their free from aisle if they have one, which I'm pretty sure Spain will, so I'm very excited. I'm, very, I'm always very specifically excited to go look at the things that are gluten-free in the supermarkets of the places that I'm traveling to. The main advice that I have for traveling is don't let a dietary requirement hold you back from going anywhere. Okay? So that's all the advice questions that I received. I hope maybe you could take something away from that yourself. I always do little questionnaire, little things like this on Instagram. So if you're not if you're not connected with me over there, I'll pop the link in my bio and you can you can join us over there for a lot a lot more fun and me panicking about what I'm gonna do with my life. Okay, well. I'm gonna go bake a cake. Just for the next couple of weeks, I'm just gonna have one video coming out a week, just a bit busy. Oh my gosh, next week is Celiac Awareness Week in the UK, so that sort of got me a little bit busy. Although, I feel like I should have planned more. I did have this video idea, but ah, oh, we'll save it for Celiac Awareness Week 2022. <laughs> or the New Zealand Celiac Awareness Week, which I think is in June or July. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.